Right, okay, here's the starter. So if you're watching this on video, you'll want to freeze that, okay? Right, sorry about that. We'll start now. And I've got some sheets. So we're going to use that board. Is that okay? And you've got your calculators. So most of these you're going to be able to check on your calculator. So let's have a little look. It's just a real feeling that like we're just peeling out here now, like we're starting to lose control, but it's fine, isn't it? It's fine. So first of all, if you were doing this, um, if it said exact answer or show detailed reasoning, you're going to show you working out. However, if you can see, if it just says find and there's like one mark by the side, it's expecting you to put it in your calculator. It might be even that it's part of another question, but we'll integrate it anyway. And then, so if they come and check, I'm going to make it look like I don't have those things. Right, so first of all, Matt, if you could integrate this, please. Uh, X. The bar of four over four. Good, so x to the four over four. In fact, that purple is about a pen. Keep going. Uh, x, I mean, three over two plus three over two x squared. Good, and then you're going to put four and one in there. So if you put four and one in there, what's our exact answer, please? Louis. Oh, hi. So, Louis, what would our exact answer be? I got 345 over 4. 345 over 4? Excellent. So let's go with number 2. Number 2. Right, so would you take your 2 out first, George, or not? Would you keep your 2 in? Uh, yeah. So if we, you kept the 2 in, okay? But you would rewrite that, wouldn't you? You would rewrite that, wouldn't you, Lauren? How would you rewrite the root X? Um, X to the half. Good, X to the power of a half. So we've got the integral of 2x to the power of a half. And if we integrate that, that power is going to become what, please, Nat? Um, uh, 3 over 2. Good. And you're going to divide the 2 by 3 over 2, which is like multiplying by 2 over 3. So 4 thirds. Now, I, I have to say, George, I would much rather, if I was doing this, have that ugly four thirds out there, you know, but um, by all means, argue with me. So you've then got three to the three over two minus zero to the three over two. And then, obviously, you're three to the three over two. So you're going to have four thirds and, of course, three to the three over two. So that's, go oh, that's, is that going to be the square root of 27? So the square root of 27, is that three root three? Keep, keep an eye on me doing this in my head. So I think your exact answer is four root three. Now what's really good about that question is that if you, that they could just say to you exact answer, exact answer, but and if you put it in your calculator, it's going to give you a decimal. So you're going to have to show you're working out. And then the last one here. So I can't integrate that. So terrible things that happen. Right, so Gus, are you happy with me integrating it like this? So I integrate the x squared, so I get x plus 3. And then I integrate the x so I get one on the bottom. Is that okay to do it like that? No, of course not. What would you do, Gus? Um, I would x squared over x plus three x to the one. Good. So some people, I, I think I, I think of it like this. I think I like to think of it as splitting up over a common denominator. So I get x plus three. Other people might like to take out a factor of x on the top and then divide it like that. Now, bizarrely, um, so what you end up with there, you're now going to integrate x plus 3 between 5 and 1. Now, that is what you would have got if you'd done that terrible thing of integrating the top and integrating the bottom, right? 
but you'd have thought that you'd have integrated it. So that's why that's so terrible when people do that. And then of course, this is now really nice to integrate. And so you're gonna get five and one. So show that, you know, if putting that into your calculator, Gus, what did you get as your final answer, please? Uh, I didn't get a final answer. Anyone get a final answer for that, Oscar? 24. 24, right? So that's one that looks like you've done that on your calculator. So what we're now going to do, what we're now going to do is go to our notes. We're going to go to our notes and have a little look at what happens. In fact, okay, so while we, before we go to our notes, I'm going to ask you to integrate something on your calculator. So if you just integrate this on your calculator. Okay, I'll give it a go. Thank you. Thanks very much. So, um, I want you, on your calculators, to integrate that function. So, x minus 1, x plus 2, between the limits of 1 and negative 2. Just do it on the calculator, and then I'll do a little sketch. Now, remember... Uh, sorry. Oh, and now it's upside down. It's going great. You can see that, can't you? Sorry about that. Right. What do you get when you put that in your calculator, Bobby? Uh, negative. Right. Negative. And we talked about, when we started looking at what integration meant, we talked about it being an area, okay? An area bounded by the curve and the x-axis. Now, if I were to sketch this, I know that it cuts the x-axis. This is why I've chosen these limits. It cuts the x-axis at one, doesn't it? And at negative two. At, it's a parabola. So it's, it's gonna look like that. And the area that I found is below the x-axis. Now, you can't, there's no such thing as a negative area, is it? An area is something, you know, with, it, it, it's a scalar, it's a numerical amount. And what that negative is doing is directing your area. So just as when we talk about negative numbers, when you start learning about negative numbers, maybe at first school even, we call them directed numbers because the negative is your direction. And what we have here is that whenever we integrate something and get a negative value, we are talking about the area being directed below the x-axis. So could we now go to our notes, please? areas areas below the x-axis A negative answer to an integral indicates, if you could write this down, that the region or part the region so that's the issue that it might not be the whole region is 
below the x-axis. So is everyone writing that now? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an example. And then I think the easiest, best thing to do is for me to stop talking. Everyone got that written down? Right, so example one, we're going to do this in our notes. I have to go and tell him that I video he's on video, don't I really? So I need to go and tell him, don't I? I'll tell him after I've sent it. So example one. <laughs> so if I were to integrate between two and zero, x, x minus one, Let's say two minus x. Right, can we all put that in our calculator, please? So, option calc integral x bracket x minus one. bracket 2 minus x and if you put your limits in so 2 and 0 so you can see why I've picked it okay so that is saying that there is an area the area bounded well the answer to that integral is 0 yeah now that doesn't make sense does it Okay, I mean, numerically, the answer is zero. But we know if we sketch what that curve looks like, if we sketch that curve, it's not going to have an area of zero in it. So what you can do, and we're going to sketch it, but of course you've got your calculators, which are really great at sketching these things, and they are also, you can also do the integrator on these calculators, so I'll show you. So if you go to menu and graph, and you're just going to enter that in. So you're going to go x bracket x minus 1 bracket 2 minus x close bracket. And then if you execute it, and I'm going to just set my viewing window. So I'm going to go shift v win and I'm going to choose standard. I'm hoping that standard is going to be okay. So standard automatically sets my axes to between 10, negative 10, both for x and y. So I'm now going to execute it and draw it. Right, so I can see there that I've probably got too big an axes. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to press exit. I'm going to press shift. So press V1 again. And I'm going to set my x between, my x min is going to be 0 and my x max is going to be 2. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to make my y min, I think, minus 5 and my y max 5. And see what that now looks like if I draw it. So I've now got something I could still make my Y values much smaller. Okay, so I'm going to do it again. Shift V win. I'm going to make my Y min minus three and my Y max three. So I've now got a curve that looks like that. So you can see that the area isn't zero. The area between the curve and the x-axis is not zero. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch it with the help 
of my calculator, although I don't really need much help from my calculator, I can see that it's going to cross the x-axis when y is 0. If I'm going to sketch y is x, x minus 1, 2 minus x, it's going to cross the x-axis at 0, it's going to cross the x-axis at 1, and it's going to cross the x-axis at 2. So it's going to intersect at all those points. Now, I've got the help of my calculator. And because I'm only interested between 2 and 0, that's all I'm going to sketch. And I can see it's literally doing that. So what you're going to have to do to find the area... So if the question asks you to find the total area or the total shaded area, what you're going to have to do is do it in two parts. Because what's happening is these are equal parts. Now, you may not spot that when, you, when you're doing this question. Right? And you may not want to assume that. What's happening is, this is a positive numerical value, and this is the exact same numerical value, but negative. And when you're combining them, they're knocking each other. Right? It's like getting five and minus five. So the way that you would answer this question is... Okay, and I'm going to rub this out. You would rewrite it so I've got the integral between 2 and 0 of x, x minus 1, 2 minus x. I'm going to rewrite it as the integral between 2 and 1 of x, x minus 1, 2 minus x. And then I'm going to add on the numerical value, so I'm going to ignore the sign. Now, we have a maths symbol for this, okay, which some of you, I think if you do further maths, you will have met. We have a numerical symbol. So, have you met, like, two vertical lines with Miss Hoyle? Okay, in further maths, you will have done. This just means you take the positive value, okay? So I'm going to take, I'm going to add on, and I'm going to take the positive value of this integral between 1 and 0. So, and what it is, so these two straight lines mean positive value of x. So what you're now going to do with your calculators is you're going to go back to run. You're going to integrate that. So I've already got that integral set up in my calculator. And I'm going to, and I find it really difficult once it's there to go back and change the limits. I'm going to change my limit that I originally had from 0 to 1. So that's going to be a quarter plus, okay, now we call these modulus. This is a modulus sign and you're going to use it quite a lot in maths. And it means just take the numerical result. And I'm now going to put that into my calculator. So I'm going to change the limits. And I'm, so which I'm finding really difficult. I'm going to change them to 1 and 0. And I'm expecting to get the answer negative a quarter. So what we've now got is a quarter plus a quarter, which is obviously a half.
So the area bounded by that curve is a half. What do you think? Now, I think what I'd really like to do now is get you to do some, but I'll talk about it a little bit with you. So what we're now going to do is we're going to go to exercise 15E in the textbooks. So I photocopied exercise 15E for you. There's all sorts of things that you could spot. Um, so I'm sort of copying out a little bit here because of my board. But we're going to talk about these questions. And there are all sorts of things that you can spot to make your life easier. So what we're doing is we're talking about... Um, Exercise 15E, okay? So, exercise 15E, right. So, question one, you can see in question one, and it says find the shaded area, that's simply going to be the integral of x squared between two and one. Is everyone happy with that? And it's going to give you a positive area. And the same with part AI. Right, the question we're going to start with is we're going to do 1BI. Now, what's going to happen there is you're going to integrate that function and you're going to put in the limits 2 and 1. You're going to get a negative value, but your answer, because there's no such thing as a negative area, will be positive. So if you get something like minus a third, we literally think that that's a third. And if you want to, you can use those symbols, but if you don't like them, that's absolutely fine. You could just get a minus area like that and then say area is a third. Does that make sense? Okay. And then I would like you to do B I I. Now have a quick look at that. There are two ways you can do BII. -I. You could integrate that function between one and negative one, couldn't you? And is that x squared minus four? Okay, so x squared minus four. Now, so we're, we're not putting these in our calculator because otherwise, you know, there's, there's very little scale that you're going to practice doing them. So that would be one way to do it. And if you were asked to show detailed reasoning, it's quite annoying working with a negative. What would be another way you could do this question? Tata, can you see anything geometrically significant about BII? Good, it's symmetrical. So what you could do is you could integrate between one and zero. We really like using zero as a limit Obviously, you're going to get a negative answer, which you make positive because it's an area, and then you could just double it. Is that okay? Yeah? And then let's look at C. So 1C. So if we look at C, you can see that in CI, you have a positive area between 1 and 2. You have a negative area between 1 and 0, and you have a positive area between 0 and 1. So for CI, you are going to have to do three integrals and add them together. And you're going to have to change the sign of the one between 0 and 1. If you look at CII, you've got a positive area and a negative area but to make it more fun they haven't told you 
what the x value is where it crosses the x-axis. So what you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to factorise. It's not the hardest thing in the world. It's just adding another step on, isn't it? You're going to have to factorise x squared minus 3x. And you're going to, obviously, you're going to have to work out that missing x value. So for this one here, you're going to do two integrals and add them together. But you only know the lower limit of the first and the upper limit of the second. You're working out that mystery value and it's between five and zero and it's reasonably obvious. But what you can't do is integrate it between five and zero because the negative bit will eat away at your answer. Is that clear? Right, well done. Thanks, bye. Off we go.